cardinal rule of explosives can be stated in a few simple words. Expose the minimum number of people to the minimum quantity of explosives for the minimum length of time. Unfortunately, this life-saving rule is not being followed at this facility. One of the basic concepts of explosive safety is compatibility. Ammunition and explosive items are assigned to one of the compatibility groups for storage, maintenance, and transportation. These groups are based on the sensitivity of the explosive, the quantity in each device, the design safety features that are built in, and toxicity. Compatibility rules try to ensure that storage of items together does not increase the overall severity of a mishap. Ideally, each type of item or division should be separated, but this is generally not feasible. A balance of safety and operational requirements may demand combinations of ammunition and explosives in storage, maintenance, and transportation. To understand what explosives can be combined and what cannot, consult Air Force Regulation 127-100 explosive safety standards for details. In case of fire, fire and chemical hazard symbols are important keys to ensure a proper response by emergency forces. The four fire symbols warn of class 1.1 mass detonation, class 1.2 explosion with fragment hazard, class 1.3 mass fire hazard, and class 1.4 moderate fire hazard. Inside an open missile maintenance and inspection bay, two teams are preparing ordnance concurrently for routine F-4 missions. One is doing a final assembly on an AIM-9 Sidewinder missile. The other team is preparing flare dispensers. Sometimes when the mission requires it, Concurrent operations may be unavoidable. This, however, is not one of those times. By permitting two unlike operations to occur in the same location simultaneously, supervisors take unnecessary risks by exposing people needlessly to hazard. These jobs could have been scheduled consecutively on separate shifts or in different locations, but someone got complacent or lazy they had carried out concurrent operations before and nothing had happened. But that was then, and this is now. During the transfer of a bomb from final assembly to a transport trailer, something that never happened before happened. The power went out. Looks like the power's gone out. All right, you guys sit tight. crew chief immediately calls the civil engineer. The CE responds quickly, and in a matter of minutes, power is restored. Beautiful. Thank you, sir. But then, the real problems begin. 
Since the engineer is already there, he would like to repair a fan heater. The crew chief tells the CE that he's got an explosives operation going on and that he should repair it another time. Hey, listen, you don't understand my schedule. I'm going on vacation next week. I got two guys out. If I don't get it now, I don't know when I'm going to be able to fix that. Well, there's rules against doing that while we're building up bombs. Hey, look, give the guy a break, will you? Won't it take a few minutes? Yeah, all right, all right. But hurry it up. Okay. Thanks a lot. It's hard to predict when an accident is going to occur. In response to a readiness exercise, a munitions team has set up a rapid assembly of munitions system, or RAMS operation, near an igloo in violation of quantity distance criteria. These personnel are part of the effort to have all aircraft loaded with munitions and ready for combat as quickly as possible. Because of the large number of bombs required the next day, it was argued that the munitions specialists could build up quicker if a rams were positioned directly in front of the igloo. Sounds like a good idea in theory, but is it really safe? Both this rams line and these nearby igloos are at risk from each other because of their proximity. By operating a rams line near an igloo, quantity distance criteria are violated. Besides the loss of personnel, an accident such as this could cripple combat effectiveness. Two days before an important firepower demonstration, a munitions team has finished assembling a variety of explosive devices. The time is 1622. None of the crew really wants to stay late. Every one of them has plans of one kind or another. There's not enough time to put the munitions back in storage before going home. So they're left in the maintenance bay, a clear violation of the cardinal rule of explosive safety. We really don't have time if we're gonna head out. Uh, we'll just leave them here, I guess. And we gotta get going. But what is the risk, really? When was the last time an accident occurred under similar circumstances? Living with explosives takes constant vigilance. Never lose your respect for the explosives. It is your job to prepare. Remember the cardinal rule. Expose the minimum number of people to the minimum quantity of explosives for the minimum length of time. Don't make a mistake that could cost you your life. 